Welcome to Predator Ridge Golf Resort. Hi, I'm Coach Cheyenne. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know a lot of you have been supporting me by clicking the subscribe button, so thank you so much for that. If you're new, make sure to click the subscribe button and the like button just so I can make a lot more videos like this. I have had the privilege of coming to the Okanagan Valley here in British Columbia to these spectacular golf courses. Today we have an exciting show for you. We are going to educate you. We will talk about on-course etiquette. We will try and inspire you by showing you unbelievable views of this golf course in the Okanagan Valley in Kamloops. And we will empower you because I have a very special guest, Kyla, who's played on tour for six years. So she will talk about her experience there and many more things she wants to see the future of golf. She also hosts an amazing program over here called Swing Like a Girl. I had the chance to see the women last night tee off from the first tee box and have a fabulous time with a glass of wine, having it a completely social and fun event which is what I'm always trying to encourage more people to learn the game. Come out, meet somebody, relax, enjoy, and see the beautiful golf courses we have here in British Columbia. Let's get started. here at Predator Ridge Golf Resort and this is a, one of the starters. Can you explain to the golfer that's never been out here what is the role of a starter? What do you do? What we do is we have a timesheet here. When you book your round of golf, you check in and if that's the time we send you out and then we can keep track of pace of play so that everybody stays at the same time and don't have to worry about running into other golfers on the course. And on average, what do you recommend for each hole? How many minutes? It should take about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. This course takes four and a half hours to play around of 18 holes. Great, so if there's four people playing, 10 minutes for each hole is the time limit we should be giving everybody. Yep, yep, that works out to about four Great. and a half hours. Great, and what else would you be telling somebody when they start? Well, to repair their ball marks on the greens, uh, not to spend too much time looking for golf balls because of the fact it does have a time limit here. Uh, we also tell them to use certain uh, sand in the bottles that has grass mixture in it so that it will grow, help the grass grow back on the fairways. So only fairways or tee boxes as well? Fairways. Tee boxes is a different blend of grass. It's okay. for the tee boxes alone. So only fairways here. Great. So yep. you would be giving that kind of information to the person before they head out. Yep. And how far the marker is, like at 150 yards, so they know how far it is. Tell them where the pin placement shows, and that shows on the one pin. Can you show us that? Because that was the first time I ever experienced it. Oh. <laughs> so, because usually there's red or blue flags yes. telling you where it is, but over here we have all white flags. Yep. Right? Yep. And then the 150 marker is a, basically a pin, like yep. this. And then, of course, when it's 150 yards out, if the sleeve is at the bottom, that means the pin placement's at the front of the green. Okay. If the pin, if the sleeve is at the top, it's at the back. Perfect. And then it'll also stop in the middle. Amazing. Yep. Great. Thank you so much. We appreciate You're it. You're quite Thank welcome. You. All right. So let's talk about golf etiquette on the golf course. We have a group that is in front of us on the green about to putt very common mistake what people do is they decide to tee up and they think that they can't reach the group in front of them and then they hit that one really good shot and the ball goes very close to that group so you have to make sure that the group in front of you is at least 250 yards past so you the ball doesn't just bounce and like roll up beside them if it ever does you have to yell four and you don't just whisper it like four. No, get it in your belly and yell four. That's gonna hurt your ears for right now, but that is how you need your projection to go all the way to them to let them know there's a ball coming your way like duck, you know, duck for cover. So that is good golf etiquette. It happens to all of us sometimes we hit the ball much further than we think it's going to go. But rule of thumb, 250 yards at least space in between the group in front of you. So that is for yelling four. Now, if your ball ends up going to the next fairway as well, by accident, make sure you get in that belly and you yell four. It's just to protect people from not getting injured. 
Okay, so that is one of the things for etiquette that we need to make sure of, as well as pace of play. Now, what does that mean? In golf, we already know it takes about four and a half hours to play. We have already also heard the starter tell us that on Predator Ridge, this specific course, four and a half hours, 10 minutes per hole. So if you're a beginner golfer, your ball's gonna go all over the place, in the water, in the rough, you're gonna lose it. Don't worry, you can pick up your ball and place it 100 yards and in and then chip and onto the green. Start practicing that. If it's taking you three or four shots to get just 100 yards off the tee box, pick your ball up, do yourself a favor, and just go 100 yards in, chip it on, and putt. And keep learning, keep growing, and you will get better and better and better. But you cannot spend a lot of time looking for your ball. Don't spend four or five shots off the tee box. All of that is a no. You are gonna delay the rest of the people from playing and you will get a starter or somebody coming your way, a marshal, and telling you you need to hurry up because you're backlogging everybody else. So pace of play in golf is extremely important. So now that group is putting on the green over there. I can hit more than 200 yards, but currently they are way past that distance. So what I would do is I would tee up and go for it. If they were in the middle of the fairway and I was able to reach them, I would tell somebody else, like my beginner golfer who's using maybe an iron off the tee box, I would get him to hit first because my ball goes much further and he's learning the game. I would say, you know what, why don't you go because you can't reach that group. So you got to start playing smart when you're out here. Hey Cheyenne, what's your score on the last hole? I got a par on the last hole. Thanks. So what we want to do is we don't want to ask on the green after you're done putting what you scored. You always want to get to the next hole as fast as you can and get everyone's score on the next tee box. Biggest mistake and etiquette pace of play rule that people go crazy about is when everyone's just hanging around on the green talking once everyone's putted and asking for the score. You need to get off the green so the next group can come through and ask for the score on the next tee box, just like we did right here. We're on hold number five. It is drop dead gorgeous, this hole. It's a par three. If you come a little bit closer, you will see that you do not want to leave the shot short. There is a lot of rough, it's tons of hill, but the view is stunning. Longer might be better than short on this hole. Let's see if we can make it happen. That's the one. Just for the beginner golfer, I'm trying to educate them on etiquette and little things. Can you just explain to us, we no longer are calling you a marshal. What is the new terminology? Well, at Predator Ridge, we're ambassadors. So we're, we're helping all the players, all the customers that come up here. And we're players assistants. So we're, we're trying to help. If somebody's lost a golf ball and we're nearby, we're gonna go in and try and help find their ball to speed up play and we want to try and keep the pace of play to our scheduled amount, which is four hours and 30 minutes on the Predator or the Ridge course, and four hours and 25 minutes on the Predator course. And we try and keep it at pace or in front or ahead of pace. So everybody gets their, uh, has a nice day. Great, so if you're on the golf course and you see a cart coming towards you and you're panicked and wondering what's going on, I thought we were going that way, don't worry. They're here to help us and keep kind of everyone on track to make sure that everyone that's playing has a great experience and isn't taking five hours, six hours to play because that just doesn't work. So they are here to help us. Sometimes they might even jump out and help you find your ball, which is great, so thank you. 
and and i've also heard that when we were allowed to use rakes sometimes you guys would even help us rake to keep pace of play going so in pace of play is a big deal in golf nobody wants to be the person being very slow and then pushes every other tee time back so 10 minutes per hole is what we were told earlier and if you see a cart coming your way they're here to help you sometimes they might not say anything just wave and smile and they'll be on their way usually they'll make they'll touch base with you the first time around they'll say hi everything going well are you having any problems or anything like that and then after that and everything is running well usually they're just a friendly wave on the way by and and reciprocate perfect great thank you so much for you're welcome by. thank you thanks, Brian. thanks for coming to predator ridge thank you see you so another thing to keep pace of play going faster there's a little bit of strategy as to where you would put your golf cart i know you've already watched my video on where to put your bag, your push cart, and your golf cart. But as you can see behind me, you wanna keep your golf cart parallel to the hole that you're currently on. So this flag, you wanna keep your golf cart parallel to the flag, but you always wanna be able to know and see where the next hole takes you. So you would logically think, well, Coach Ian said that you have to put your golf cart parallel to the flag, but from there you can't see the next hole. If you look at where my golf cart is, which is parallel to the flag, which is right behind me, and I can see the next hole, which is right in front of me. So that saves a good five minutes in terms of having proper golf etiquette because once I put my ball in, I pick my ball up, I go straight to my cart, which is very close, and I walk. I am not lugging all the way back in that corner and then bringing my cart around to go to the next hole. I know that sounds very silly, but honestly, if you do it this way, you're, you will save at least half an hour playing 18 holes just by saving five, two, three minutes in each hole. So you have to see when you're coming down the cart path with your push cart or your golf cart, you're gonna come all the way down. I want you to see your flag, the one you're playing on, and I want you to ask whoever you're playing with or follow the golf path to see where the next hole is. So, the flag, your golf cart, and then the next hole should always be visible to you. That will help with pace of play as well. Another quick etiquette thing for you to keep pace of play going quite fast. If you are 100 yards in playing with your partner and your partner is already on the green as they've had a fantastic shot and you are a little bit short like myself, let's walk up to my ball. But when my partner takes the golf cart all the way up to the hole, I am making sure I'm grabbing my wedge and my putter, not just my wedge, and then going, walking to the golf cart and grabbing my putter. 100 yards and in, you grab your whatever iron, if it's an iron, grab your iron and your putter, because if you get it onto the green, you just wanna walk straight up to the pin where your ball is with your putter. And then you can just lay your wedge down there. So, follow me. I would come over here, I would drop my putter, right in front of me i would take one practice swing and then i would you know let the person up there know hey heads up i'm going and go and hit my shot once i hit my shot i pick up my putter and i start walking towards the hole so for example if i was to hit my shot let's do a quick one that is short not a problem i would grab my putter and i would keep walking up that way pace of play is fast i have a very special guest here today and she will tell us a little bit about her background her playing on tour around the world sure. and um, the amazing swing like a girl program that she has over here which i would just saw a bunch of ladies take part in and having a fabulous time with a glass <laughs> yeah. of wine yeah. so we will get right into that as well <laughs> but please let everyone know who you are and a little bit about yourself sure yeah 
So um, I'm Kyla Inaba. I'm born and bred in Kelowna, British Columbia. Went to school at UBC in Vancouver. And um, I've been here for four seasons, teaching and instructing and coaching, running uh, the Swing Like a Girl program. And prior to that, I did play professional golf for uh, about six years, playing in Canada, America, and Australia. How do you feel about <laughs> women that decide, you know what, I've hit too many in this hole, I will pick it up and just put it on the green and putt or take it to the next hole. What would you say to that? Absolutely. Yes. Right? Like <laughs> you're learning the game, so you don't need to be really hard on yourself for topping it, topping it, topping it. Right? We don't need to get a point of frustration. You just say to your friend, hey, Cheyenne, I'm just going to putt my ball up beside you. Maybe we'll play a scramble from there or play best ball Perfect. or whatever it is. Right? So, um, so yeah, so my goal with this program is we have a lot of, uh, options so we've got the swing like a girl ladies night which you saw uh that just happened right uh we do have a select group of ladies because we only have a certain number of tea time so that right. group is full for this year but hopefully we can grow it even bigger next year that does happen every thursday night we play nine holes super relaxed uh like i say we don't have like a game or a, even a scorecard that we hand out if they want to keep score you can um and if if you want to just hit a few shots here and there, you can as well. A lot of those ladies, it's about the camaraderie and the yes. social aspect. So you can the, feel that. Absolutely. Yeah. So the highlight is going in after the round to have a drink, to have some food um, and, you know, to meet new people. Right. So we do encourage them to sign up as singles. If they're we got a lot of ladies that are new to the community, sign up as a single. No problem. We're going to pair you up with other ladies. And uh, a lot of the ladies who have even been here for many years, they go, well, I want to meet new people too. Absolutely. So they sign up with their buddy or as a single and we can just mix and match. And, and that's how we make it a community and kind of a friendlier approach to golf. I want to give Predator Ridge Golf Resort a big thank you for having me here and hosting me. We have had an unbelievable time. Your golf course is in amazing condition. And I hope if you live in British Columbia, you come and check them out. Stay overnight at their beautiful resort. Come and play two of their golf courses. You will not be disappointed. As always, if you have any questions at all, leave it in the comments below. In the description, I'll have the link to the Predator Ridge Golf Course and a few little tips of things maybe to bring with you like bug spray. Make sure to bring your sunscreen. If you have a hat, make sure to wear it. As you can see, I have my sunglasses.